What we're going to be doing is some reverse engineering on one of the most successful real estate blogs of all time. I'm going to be sharing and you're going to be discovering a way that you can build a strong blog foundation with keyword silos. And a strong blog foundation is something that my friend Lori Manny used to call her back engine. And we're going to talk about exactly how to do that today with keyword silos and I'm, I'm real excited about that because it's really really fundamental and it's very very important so how would you like to create a blog that Google totally loves and adores absolutely wildly um, that's what we're talking about here we're talking about creating a blog that the search engine spiders are going to come back that they're going to visit uh, they're going to find pages your pages to rank they're going to give you lots of you know really good rankings in the search engines and when people are looking for what you have to offer they're gonna find you on Google and that's what it's all about um, do you know that the best way to set up that you set up your blog or the way you set up your blog infrastructure is gonna make the difference between a money blog and just plain wasting your time with your blog all right your blog infrastructure is important you know people build a house what, what do they do they put in a foundation first and they put in the foundation because that is what holds up the whole rest of the house. Um, I know a lot of people in real estate and in niches everywhere that are blogging and creating hundreds and hundreds of, of posts. And if you, know, if you go back and take a look at those stats and their Google Analytics, you're going to find out that, that a lot of those pages hardly ever get seen. So if you really want to make a count and make your time count, uh, then you want to make sure that you've got the fundamentals and make sure that you've got what it takes to, you know, to, to build that foundation. And here's why. Google likes relevant content. A good foundation is going to you know, make the content relevant. It's going to tie things together. And that's one of the things Google wants and loves. Google also likes a natural style blogging. They want to see something that looks really, really, you know, that's conversational, that people can understand. Um, in, uh, you know, that doesn't look like it's automatic, that is created by a bunch of bots. You know, there is a lot of automatic stuff that's happening right now. There are a lot of automatic tools that take away the natural style blogging. And even a lot of people who used to blog before, they used to blog and kind of like pack keywords everywhere, the same keywords over and over again. And you could read their blogs and you knew what they, what they were doing was just try, trying to attach the, uh, attract the spiders. But the spiders have become a lot smarter over the years, and the spiders know natural from unnatural. So, you know, be natural, be yourself. You know, speak conversationally, just be smart about it. Google loves engagement, too. Uh, so, you know, we're going to talk about that in, in the type of stuff that we, that we post with our keywords, you know, and, and exactly how we structure those additional elements and how we structure our blog after we build a foundation. Um, Google has rules. They create algorithms. They know, you know, they're little spiders, and and mathematically, they know if you're doing what you should be doing to make it relevant, if it's natural, and if you're engaged. So they apply those rules. And if you score well with Google, you will rank high. If you don't score well, you won't get rankings. People won't find you online, and they will find your competitors. And most of all, Google wants a good user experience. They want to know that people who come to your blog are enjoying it. That's why they, they like it when people come and they stay, when, they're, when, when you have a good stick rate, when people are watching videos and they're on your blog a long time. That's one of the things that gives Google a, 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 a hint that they're having a good user experience. I think this is probably one of the things on my blog that, uh, that, that, that I have going for me, and that is I have people who are coming and like the average length of time that people spend on my blog is generally about 28 minutes over the long haul. Um, and there are weeks when I have some content where my average visits are over an hour, which is really, really, really good. And that's what defines you know, a good user experience. People need to stay, they need to click around, they need to look at other articles, and that's why having relevant content is so important. So today we're going to talk about three things mostly, all right? First, we're going to reverse engineer a very, very successful blog in the real estate niche. Uh, if you're not in the real estate niche, you can apply it to whatever niche you're in. We're going to talk about some pitfalls that you can avoid as well and ways that you can do things right. And then how to use some smart automation to make your life just a little bit easier or maybe even a lot easier.
Okay. Uh, my name is Frances Flynn Torson. I am an author. I have written real estate books, and I have also written the Real Estate Social Media Policies and Procedures Manual. I have about five books on Amazon. I have some more coming up very, very shortly, and I'm also publishing some works by other authors. Uh, I've been in the real estate game for oh, almost 30 years right now. I started as an agent way, way back in the mid-80s. Uh, right now I work in real estate in, the, uh, in training and education and consulting. I have also spent a good amount of time in the magazine publishing field. I was in New York City for about 10 years before I was in real estate. I had jobs on national magazines. I wrote about technology. I wrote about uh, arts and entertainment. I wrote about women's issues. I, uh, my last job in magazine publishing was at the Ladies Home Journal where I was production editor in the early 80s. Um, I have a total of 46 years in publishing, and that's a, that's the God's honest truth. I had my first newspaper column, my first weekly newspaper column, when I was 16 years old in Paramus, New Jersey, and uh, and that was a long time ago. But I have spent that much time, you know, in and about the uh, the the the, uh, the world of publishing. In those days, of course, everything was print. There was no internet back in those days. I was working with a manual typewriter, so I've seen quite an evolution of technology over the years. I've been blogging almost 10 years. In January of 2015, it'll be 10 years that I've been blogging. And we're going to start with a quote from an old friend. And this is Lori Manny. Lori Manny is a, was a realtor in Long Beach, California. Uh, Lori Manny was a top realtor. She was a very, very uh, successful realtor. And she had one of the best blogs in the business. And we're going to be looking at that today. And Lori knew that her success was tied in large measure to the way that she worked and planned and strategized and applied keywords in her blog. And Lori said, if I want a keyword, I will write a couple of articles and those keywords will belong to me. And that was really all she had to do because she had that basic infrastructure. We spent a lot of time talking about that over the years. Uh, we spent a lot of time brainstorming and talking to the wee hour, you know, to the wee hours of the morning about what worked on online, what was good, what wasn't good, what worked for her. Let me ask you a question: Do you wish you knew how to blog with the best of the best? So if you could, you know, take some of these secrets, and and that's the whole idea. We're going to do that. Would you like a solution to time management issues? That is probably the single biggest complaint I hear from people about applying new strategies: is the time that it takes. Um, and would you like the answer as well? We're going to do our best to to help you out. You know, there are some consequences if you don't act and you don't apply, you know, smart strategies and do some things right. If you don't do it right, somebody else will. Somebody else in your market will do it if you don't do it. So if you don't have a blog that is going to rank in the search engines, if you don't write articles that are going to be found, you know, somebody else is going to be doing it. So it's very, very important that you do that. Uh, there used to be a rule, and it, I, I guess to some extent, you know, 80-20 applies, but that 80-20 rule is is fastly evolving into a, into, has become a 90-10 or a 95-5 rule. And I think on the net, especially in the real estate net where you know only 12% of realtors even have a blog these days, this 95-5 rule is really going to rule. And and if people are not taking action and blogging smart, they're you know you're gonna if you're if you're part of the 95% that that is the losing that is the losing game. So you really really need to have a blog that's going to be. Uh, productive, and you know, in the old days, we used to say, and, and the old days is just a few years ago. Well, you know, if you don't, if blogging isn't you, you don't have to blog. Uh, yada yada yada. You know what? That that just doesn't work anymore. If you're online, you need to be blogging. If you're not on, you know, if you're not blogging, you need to do something, and then you need to do that right. Um, if you don't act, buyers and sellers are going to find somebody else. A, uh, I think it's amazing because a lot of Realtors who are in the business are losing a lot of repeat business and referral business. Uh, at the end of the day and at the end of their transactions, what people are telling them is they're really happy with their business. But when it's time to do another transaction, they're calling somebody else. And that's what the numbers are telling us. You know, you're not going to get another chance if you don't do this. This is, you know, we're at Web 3.0, Web 4.0. I don't know even what we're calling it anymore. But it, the web has, you know, really evolved very, very quickly. It is very engaging right now. 
right now, and it is also very, very mobile. So let's let's take a look. A lot of the stuff that that Lori Manny did, uh, it still applies. So let's see if if there is a way to solve all of this. We're gonna have three main goals today. We're gonna re again, we're gonna reverse engineer the blog. We're gonna talk about how to keep it legal and compliant, and I'm gonna show you a way to get my real estate social media policy and procedure manual for free and we're going to use automation to get some more done. Um, this is a picture taken from Connect by uh, by my friend Drew Bloomfield in Scottsdale and uh, we see a panel, of the picture in the panel there we see Linda Davis, Mary Popandi, Lori Manny and Theresa Boardman and uh, this is way back in 2008. Lori Manny had said, do you understand how many keywords there are to rank and how much writing you have to do to spread these keywords across the multiple of posts you you will write so you can rank so yeah I mean she got it way way back when and she knew it was about keywords and she knew it was about getting articles on the web and content on her blog and and it was about the commitment to spend the time that she needed to do to do that and uh, and that is the bottom line and that's exactly what she talked about keywords and again, this is uh, words from Lori Manny. These are words, you know, this is pretty much a plan that, that she lays out that top internet marketers talk about right now in 2014 and, and lots of people are hearing it like this is something that's very, very new. It's not new. This is something that Lori did way back when. You know, you pick a niche, you know, you pick the part of the niche that you want to concentrate on and you go for it. And when we're talking real estate guys, you know, real estate isn't the niche. Some people say, well, I work in a niche, I work in real estate. Well, guess what? You know, real estate isn't a niche. Real estate is a is a very, very broad niche. Uh, but you have a, ge a geographic niche, you know, your your town, your neighborhoods are niches. First time home buyer is a niche. Um, HUD buyers are a niche. Investors is a niche. Uh, you know, boomers, uh, 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 relocation buyers, second, third, fourth home buyers, there are all sub niches that are very, very important. And the more you can drill down, the better you can target and the better you're going to do. So pick your niche wisely and then pick a keyword that reflects what that niche is about. Again, you know, real estate in Phoenix is, is not a good keyword you know that's that's not a good keyword for an agent to pick uh, golf communities in Scott you know golf condos in Scottsdale you know is 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 a good keyword uh, or for or Lori would pick keywords you know Long Beach condos Long Beach you know Long Beach condos Long Beach investment properties those are good keywords um, and then sub keywords are words that relate to the main keyword. Um, Lori had had a strategy when she wrote articles. All right, she would pick a property, and we'll talk about a property. She had a five unit she was listing, and I remember discussing it to her. It was going to be about two weeks before the property came on the market, and she was going to be targeting that market, targeting investors. Of course, a five unit speaks to investors, and so she started to plan out her entire strategy based on that uh, that premise and so one of the first things she did was start to write a couple of articles about the neighborhood where the property was located so she wasn't selling the property yet all right she wasn't selling the property she didn't mention the property she was simply seeding the search engines with keywords about that neighborhood that were you know recent that are relevant you know to to the day and, and generating interest about the neighborhood. And then she started to talk about financing, and certainly financing is something that investors are very interested in. And she started to talk about the type of financing that worked with the type of property that she had listed. Again, she wasn't selling the property. She wasn't talking about the property. She was just seeding the search engines with keywords and recent relevant content that was going to be uh, that was going to matter when, when the property came on the market. And then she started to write about trends, about investment trends, about trends in real estate in Long Beach, about trends in real estate in the neighborhood. And then she started to tie together all of the articles with, you know, with trends and financing in neighborhoods. And she was really, you know, just creating a launch for the listing. And when the listing actually came on the market, she had people, you know, ready and, and, and just waiting in line to see it uh, and she sold it rather quickly 
So this is a really, really good strategy. You know, this is a, a, a kind of a strategy that people use, internet marketers use right now, and other people use in other industries. It's called a launch. They have product launches. They have launches where they're, you know, selling stuff. They're building up, you know, desire. They're 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 gauging the uh, the market appetite. They're they're feeding information to people to, uh, to 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 generate engagement and then they go for you know for the uh, for the sale so it's quite an interesting uh, thing that she did which is kind of like launching a, a listing and this this entire pre-listing launch strategy is something that uh, that people pay thousands of dollars to learn about in the internet marketing world when they talk about product launch strategies but this is it basically when when she would come up you know when, when she had a new listing this is how she would launch it and of course her content about the property was would be would be linked to this kind of stuff too uh, we you know and, and think about it you know think about this type of melange of, of of information on the net and what is it that has made Trulia and Zillow so unbelievably successful it's the way they have integrated all of this really rich information that people are looking for because they're not just looking at the property they're looking at neighborhoods they're looking at their financing options they're looking at trends they're looking at you know competing properties so tying all of this stuff together uh, was really really smart and it was a real great uh, great strategy I'm going to show you an example of a series of articles she wrote uh, about a buyer agent. She has a whole section on her blog on how to hire a buyer agent. And the main article is, t is, is titled First Time Home Buyer Tips Hire a Buyer Specialist When Buying Long Beach Homes and Condos. Now, just take a look at that headline. You know, look at how keyword rich that is. It's a and with a call to action. It's location specific. It talks about the kind of work that she would do for them, um, and it was just excellent, absolutely excellent. Uh, and she has an entire series of articles, all with links, and they all link back and forth to each other. Uh, one of those articles is called Home Buyer Tips: Don't Make Any Major Purchases. All right, she's obviously addressing some financing issues and people who are, uh, you know, getting ready to buy and, and cautioning them about not spending their, their cash and putting their their loan approval in jeopardy. She has another article titled "Home Buyer Tips: Things to Avoid Before Purchasing a Home." Home buyers' tips: Changing jobs affects your ability to purchase a home. All of these are relevant. These are all, you know, basically working with uh, with keywords. What are her What's her main keyword here? It's it's home buyer tips. It's it? It's buyer tips. It's uh, and then she's got first time home buyers. She's got buyer specialists. She has uh, you know buying Long Beach homes. So she has some great great keywords and sub keywords here that she's using. And if you go into the blog itself, you can see that she has all of these uh, articles linking to each other within the blog. So people who are reading one of these articles are very, very likely to have an interest in, in relevant content contained in the other one. So they they click around. That is what gives her or gave her a lot of page views. The, the, the site is still live. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but but this is quite interesting. So that's a great example of a way to, you know, to tie it all together. Uh, she worked with investors too. So uh, here, looking for investment property, she has a income property for sale and take a look at some of the articles that are listed uh, to that income property for sale in Long Beach five plus units two to four units for sale triplexes for sale in Long Beach California duplexes for sale in Long Beach California so what she did was she tied these articles to listings she tied them to IDX searches she tied them to uh, trends articles and all kinds of things and again they're all interlinking and that's you know part of the secret to her success is, is linking relevant articles so how do you do this you know the first thing you want to do is is some keyword research and you know you accomplish keyword research using software I mean certainly there are many kinds of of software on the market many brands of software that will let you do keyword research you can do it at Google um, Google has a, a Google uh, keyword planning tool 
uh, inside of the uh, the ad dashboard. You can get that, do that for free. You just sign up as a as an AdSense uh, uh, customer. You don't have to spend any money. But the geek, you know, the Google Keyword Planner is phenomenal, and you can go to and do keyword research and find out what people are actually looking for in your area, and uh, and do that, and uh, and then use the keywords people are looking for. Then again, you're going to select your niche, and then you're going to do some more keyword research around that niche. Pick your target keywords, and then you write and you create content so you know create the content uh, create articles um, when I say content you know content is a whole lot of things right now content includes articles of course content includes videos uh, videos are extremely important right now content infographics are very very important um, PDFs are great you know Google can actually hear what your videos say and they can understand so Google Google can read the keywords in your videos. Google can read a PDF so they know what's in, you know, what's contained within the PDF that you write. So, you know, as you're creating content and you're sharing content, you know, all of that stuff is uh, is going to add immeasurable, valuable content that's relevant, and you can do that quite easily. The second, the second part of this is, is, is we really want to stay legal. All right, we want to make sure that we're doing things right, and I'll tell you exactly why we're getting to this shortly. But there are federal laws, there are state and local rules and regs, and there's a Realtor Code of Ethics for anybody who belongs to the National Association of Realtors. I wrote the Real Estate Social Media Policies and Procedures Manual. I have a co-author with that. I also have a broker implementation guide and a training program, and I can tell you that there are a lot of things that people do on their blogs that don't comply, and it's important that you do it because you put your business at risk, brokers are at risk, and, uh, and consumers are at risk when things aren't right. And it is with some sadness, I'm going to talk about a couple of other things that the, you know on, on, on Lori's blog here um, and, I, and I'm quite sad about it. Lori is a, was a very very dear friend of mine but it would also be very very disingenuous of me to go through you know a discussion about about her blog strategies and, and what wonderful stuff she was doing without acknowledging something here that that really is an issue that that isn't right. Now this is the uh, blog and, and what the home page looks like right now. It's, it's still live. It's a very very pretty site. Again it's very rich. There's a lot of great content but the problem is is that it gives the appearance on so many levels that Lori's still here. If you take a look at what I highlighted down here at the bottom, it says to begin your search for the perfect home or sell your home, begin your journey by calling Lori Manny. Now, Lori Manny is deceased for almost four years. She died four years ago. And uh, and of course, she had, she had a great, great blog, but you know, for all intents and purposes, somebody who is visiting this blog um, has every reason to think that Lori Manny is going to pick up the phone when they when they dial that number or or when they when they get in touch with her. There are lots of pages on this website, and you can see on the sidebar here too. There's a picture. Uh, there is her telephone number, featured listings. I can sell it. Looks very very engaging, and it looks like she's here. Lori's available to assist you to assist you in all of your Long Beach real estate transactions. Now there is one page on this real estate site there is an about me page on the website uh, if you click the about me page on the website uh, there is a notice that Lori passed away and there is a, a, a there, there there are several paragraphs paragraphs about that. That's the only place on this entire website where that notice appears. And I just I just, you know, find it difficult to understand how, you know, what's going on here. Uh, there are, I mean, you know, just all of these calls to action to to uh, to call Lori and get in touch with her. Um, and I'm just just amazed about that. Um, this, you know, the property has an active IDX listing site. There's obviously generating some leads. Uh, but again, when you think about rules and regs and code of ethics, there are you know issues of false advertising. I think that may apply here. I think there's some misrepresentation certainly, because I don't think that you can just go to one page on a website that has so much content, make the disclosure there, and then you know continue over and over again to invite people to call the agent there. So I, I think this is something somebody really should take a look at, and it is with you know some pain that I share that with you today. I um, but I, I again I, I it, it it just seems disingenuous to to have this discussion about everything that that is right about this website without pointing that out and that is not something that reflects on Lori at all you know Lori passed away very very suddenly and and this is not something that is her doing it's sad nonetheless so we're going to move on here at any rate so and again it's about a blog site that is set up right you know 
Lori said, you have to set up your blog site right and you have to write for the search engine. So it was a time when I might have, you know, might have wondered about writing too much for the search engines and not writing naturally. I think you can really strike a very, very good balance. I think you can write very, very naturally and, and do that right. Lori did that certainly long before I did, but she did a great job. So you've got to think about what the search engines are looking for and do that. So what is your action plan here? You know, what do you need to do to make this, this work? You need to set up categories. Categories. You need to set up keyword categories relevant to the market that people are actually looking for. And then use keyword themes, you know, much as Lori did, keyword themes to build your article sets, to build your, you know, your, your little uh, groups of uh, of articles and then you need to use whoops lots uh, that shouldn't be that should be multimedia you need to use multimedia in your in your content you know you're going to write an article you want to be sure that you've got lots of rich media that means optimized uh, photos that means videos that means infographics that means lots of pillar content that people use and and probably really really think about you know some content curation content curation is not stealing content content curation is just using stuff that's on the web and uh, and applying that you know your stuff and other people's stuff and you have to be very very mobile um, when it comes to and again, repurposing your content. I, you know, if you've got any top tens, you know, a lot of people have written a lot of articles over the years. You know, the top five restaurants in town, the top, you know, ten festivals in our state, the top schools, the top whatever. You know, all of, you know, a lot of that's a lot of that content was written as articles it's written with text and it's very easy right now with some of the tools that we have to repurpose that into other formats to build a an infographic to build a you know something into a PDF that you can share at PDF sharing sites that you can build into a video quite easily so you can take the same content and use it over and over again and even you know repurpose some of that content on on the older pages and get them going again um, here we go here's here's an idea about about how to do that we take a main keyword and then we're going to get a number of sub keywords so probably four sub keywords so take a main keyword for your site and how you're gonna if you're working with an existing site here's my here's my thought Go to Google and go to your analytics and see what is, you know, what is your top money page. And when I talk about a money page, I'm talking about the page that gets the most traffic, that brings you the most calls, uh, the kind of a page that brings you the most opt-ins, perhaps. What page is that? What are the keywords that are driving people to your money pages? And the money pages are the ones that bring you customers and clients who do business with you. That's what a money page is. Uh, people, you know, people in the internet marketing world call a blog a money site. A money site is something that's going to make you money. All right, that's what a blog is. So, what is your main keyword? Where do you get most of your business? And concentrate on that because if you have pages that are already driving you business, then you know, build on that and 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 go with that. And then pick, you know, pick sub keywords. So, and then plan your content around that. So, when you have a sub keyword, write an article with that sub keyword. Write a second article, a third article, you know, a fourth article, and a fifth article, and and then tie them together. Remember, go back, let's go back and remember what Lori Mann did when she was writing about that five unit she talked about the neighborhood she talked about financing she talked about trends for any of the keywords that you have write in sets and then link those articles you know back and forth together this may be a week's worth of blogging you may do a month's worth of blogging concentrating on that sub keyword set you know sub keywords and and variations so when I talk about a, a variant okay a sub keyword variant it is this okay we've got Long Beach condos okay condos in Long Beach would be a variant of that um, condos for sale in Long Beach would be another variant in that and using those variants of the of the sub keyword is the kind of practice that is uh, that's natural blogging that makes your blog content relevant one article to another and that lets Google that makes Google that lets Google uh, consider your blog to be written naturally so you're not saying 
Long Beach condos, Long Beach condos, Long Beach condos, Long Beach condos over and over again. You're using variants of that you know, throughout the articles and then you link those articles back and forth one to another and what that will do is it will again you know highlight the relevance and it will also encourage people to click on, on additional relevant content get you more page views make your blog stickier you know keep your visitors longer and uh, and and the, again that's what Google loves that's what Google wants to see and uh, and you'll be serving up what Google wants to see and you'll be also sh you know serving up a really really good user experience for uh, for your people which again is another thing that Google wants to see you know I, if you you know think about it uh, you know we're talking about your niche buyers you know who your who's your target market who are you selling to Google has a target you know Google has a perfect buyer Google has somebody in uh, in mind who, who they want to really take care of and and when when you know who Google's target market is it tells you a lot because Google's perfect buyer Google's buyer avatar or Google's consumer avatar is grandma and they want the web they want real estate search I'm not just real estate they want all search experience on Google to be safe and relevant and a good experience for grandma and that's what Google is looking for when Google writes its algorithms, when Google creates a new set of rules, Google doesn't like to see misrepresentation. They don't like to see people, you know, offering cancer cures for you know using crazy uh, uh, schemes and 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 things that don't work. You know, preying on people's desperation and and um, you know and sadness. Google really wants the web to be a safe place. Um, and Google again wants to see things relevant and one of those ways of being a good citizen on the web is by offering really good stuff for people by making it a safe place by not misrepresenting by not doing false advertising by offering good content and when we do that one of the bonuses and one of the consequences of that is that we have a money site that actually produces uh, results that brings clients and customers and helps us do our business and, and make money as a result now let's talk about an article. When we're writing an article, what is it that we really want to include? Again, like as I say, we've got the text in the article, and we want to include at least one piece of rich media. And this goes for every article you publish, by the way. If you have an existing blog and you want to bring that blog to the next level, what you want to do is again go and see right now which are the are the articles that Google likes the most where are they sending the most amount of traffic and then go to those articles and just you know tweak them a little bit if you don't have pictures on them already that are optimized put a picture on if you have one picture on and you can put some more on that would be relevant that would dress up the article then do that that would be a very very good thing to do video oh my goodness well video is very very important um, I I've been going back to a lot of my old articles and I've just been adding video to the end of a lot of those and not necessarily even video that I've created myself. You can go to YouTube, you can go to Vimeo, I think YouTube is probably my favorite and you can find relevant content and relevant video about anything you know just about anything and so pick a video and embed a video at the end you know what will that do? Um, it will be something that people will like to click on and 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 see, you know, that people would like to view, that people will like to, you know, maybe they'll want to share that. It will keep them there longer. It will include, you know, certainly increase the amount of time that people spend. It will increase the engagement, and it's just really really good for your blog health to include video there, uh, and include links, include links to other articles inside your blog uh, to relevant uh, to relevant. Um, content. I did an interesting ex ex uh, experiment recently where I took the top 10 articles in my blog and I put a, a little banner at the top of each of those articles and I said click here you know, to see the top 10 articles on my blog and, uh, and then I have a, a list of the top 10 articles and my goodness was that something uh, that, that got a lot of people clicking around. Um, that was a little trick taught to me by, uh, by my friend Peter Garrity and, and it just is amazing you might want to think about that and um, the other thing that that Google wants to see it wants to see some outbound links too 
And don't be afraid about linking out to other blogs, to other places, to other sources where you get content, um, especially if you're doing some curation. Content curation is something I, uh, I do a lot of, and I have some very, very good software for that. Um, content curation is something that makes blogging a lot easier, a lot richer, and brings a lot of traffic. Again, you don't have to write everything yourself. Um, some of you know some people like to write their all their own stuff, and and I, and I guess that's cool. I also like to write, but I I know that there's a lot of content, and I can put up a lot of content very very quickly, um, and and drive a whole lot more traffic, and and make my blog get a lot more traffic when I'm you know working with other people. And the other thing about 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 that and working with other content is that the authority from those sites, the uh, the Google juice from those sites will rub off on your blog. So, you know, just think about that a little bit. Do you want to go manual or automatic? Okay, so setting this all up is, is definitely time consuming. You're setting up categories. It's a lot of work. Um, you have to create articles and you have to do a lot of of, of interlinking so you can definitely do it manually you know you can definitely do that uh, you can do pretty much anything manually that you want you know if you want to uh, make bread yourself you know which I do you know I will I, I, I use flour and I get the ingredients and I suppose you know if I wanted to I could uh, go and buy the wheat and, and, and harvest the wheat or something but I'm not you know interested in getting that manual about the stuff I do um, we use a lot of automation through, you know, in other areas of our lives, uh, and 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 a blog is is one of those places. With with blogs and and uh, pu online publishing automation, you know, you've got to you know make some distinctions. Some of the automatic stuff is just garbage. I mean, I I see a lot of stuff that comes online that says, oh, I'll produce this, it does everything automatically, blah, 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 and it serves up just junk. I mean, you wouldn't want to do that. So what you what you're looking for when you're when you're looking at blog automation is you're looking at developers with with proven um, track records who give you options of degrees of automation and manual setup that let you save a lot of time without sacrificing important decisions about what you're going to do. Um, I'm showing you here. This is something that I started working with. It's brand new. I, I find it extremely worthwhile, and it's one of the reasons I'm sharing it here. Um, this is being introduced as a new product right now. There is a very, very big launch. It's called the P1 Traffic Machine. It's a blog plugin. Again, this is probably going to go down. I'm guessing as uh, as the tool of the year for me for 2014, as far as I can tell. And that's why I'm sharing this here. I've got some really neat new stuff lately, but this one really, really takes the cake. Um, this is going, it's really cheap right now, too. It's very, very cheap. I don't know, 90% off or something. It's going on, in a couple of days, it'll be $500. People pay that. But, you know, these launches give you an opportunity to do some really, really special stuff. And what the, well, who this is for is for anybody who really wants to build a keyword silo structure. Anybody who's working very, very hard, who doesn't get a lot of results, and for anyone who really wants to save some time. It's not for anybody who's not committed to their blog success. It's not for anybody who's already happy. You've got everything. It's working great. You're getting great results. You don't need any improvement. That's fine. Then, then, then you don't need this plugin. You know, if you're not interested in treating your blog as a serious business asset, and if you're, or, or if you're just ready to give up and just not do that, that, then it's not for you. But what this does is it sets up a blog. Honest to God, it sets up a new blog in two minutes. Um, in tomorrow's uh, blogathon episode, I'm going to just I'm going to do one from scratch, right on right online, because this is so easy, very inexpensive. The training is awesome. I'm using it. I'm going to be doing a lot of work with this. Again, as I say, I'm I'm concentrating a lot of my effort. I'm spending a lot of time. I'm you know this is Memorial Day weekend. I'm sharing this because this is something that I think is really really great. The developer is a fellow by the name of Peter Garrity, and he's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I had, think I've learned more from him in the past couple of years than, than anybody else about uh, about search engine optimization. But the stuff that used to take me hours and hours and hours is stuff that I can do in just minutes now. And and this is something he just, you know, just released just a few days ago. And I am just absolutely floored. I'm thrilled. I just absolutely love it. Um, one of the things I'm going to be doing is for any, and again, you know, I'm, I, I sign up as an affiliate, and so I make a couple of a couple of dollars when somebody buys one. 
Um, and, and I'm very, very happy to support anybody who makes a decision to buy this. So I haven't really put together a bonus package yet in total because this is kind of just happening. Uh, but I will have a complete package. And what it's going to include is a social media policy manual. So this is something that's selling for about $97 now. Um, I've got a new broker implementation guide, a new version of that coming out shortly. It's going to be available for Kindle or Nook or for anybody's e-reader. There's some, there's a whole new update, and you get all the future updates. Um, I've got a, I've got a plugin that that will be, um, that will be part of the bonus package. I probably have about, about um, three or four hundred dollars worth of bonuses for a product that's going to cost you, you know, way, way under even a hundred. I mean, it's like I don't even know what the heck it is. It's probably, I think it's about sixty dollars or so. It's, 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 it's crazy. Um, so it's something to think about. What I'd like you to do is just think about that. Just go over to this link, take a look at this. Um, again, I, I'm serious enough about it. And I'm, I'm excited enough about it that I. You know, plan some 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 business here around this, uh, and I'm working with this on, Memor on Memorial Day weekend. Um, I think it's really exciting. Uh, I the reason I decided to do this is because I feel I would have been I would feel guilty at the end of the week if I hadn't done this. Um, I know it's going up to four ninety four hundred ninety nine dollars, and uh, you know. I don't want people to come and say, "Why didn't you tell us about that?" You know, during the launch, and and it really is is, is a lot about guilt. I I mean, I don't want to feel the guilt, like I didn't share this opportunity, and uh, because I really do think it is, and I think it's a really, really, really great, uh, great, great thing to do. If you go to the realtygram.com forward slash machine, he's got a real neat demo there. Uh, now. When you go to a sales page like that, I just want to tell you too. You know, he it's written in in the parlance of inter, of the internet marketing community. And when they talk about money sites, I mean that's that's a blog site, that's a website that makes you money. And a lot of the people who visit that website are people in the you know home business, do, doing business at home niche. You know, make money at home, make money online, blah blah blah. They're not necessarily people who are you know offline. Salespeople who are working in, in in real estate niches or other places, so a lot of this stuff, you know, just you you don't see some of this stuff because it it's the the text the copywriting isn't written for real estate agents, and so I felt somewhat compelled at this launch just to, you know, to take this information and to put it into a um, um, into context, uh, you know, it it. It's funny because every time Peter Peter Garrity, this this developer, does a webinar or does a training, I think to myself, and I always, you know, I'm always thinking to myself, you know, if I could put him in a room with Lori Manny, I mean, that would have been such a fun thing to do because Lori would definitely dig this. I mean, Lori would dig this, and and she and I would would, would have a lot of fun with that. I know, uh, and she would really like Peter, and I'm sure that Peter would love her. And you know, Peter has the, I think he's from Romania. And he has a very interesting regs to riches story. You know, he's he's an internet marketing guy who's got a seven-figure business. He has a superb uh, software business, and I have a bunch of his software. It's, he's one of the few who is reliable, who really backs it up, who does unbelievable training attached to everything he he puts out. I mean, when you see the training he does, you just say, "Oh my God!" Um, and and so he really, really takes care of people very, very well. Um, so he's a neat guy. At any rate, I'm going to turn the, I'm going to turn this part down. I'm going I'm pretty much wind up a little early. Um, great vi video, but stuck on number five, not seeing any examples. Slides are not changing. Looks like people are seeing slides stuck. Some people can see it all. Hmm. All right, so if you didn't see everything there, then I don't know why they were stuck unless it was something in Google. Now, right now I am, what you should see is the, um, and I can see, that's very interesting. So on my, you know, on my computer, I've got a computer next to me where I'm running this and it looks okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a look at the YouTube video afterward, and if it's not right for some reason, I will create another video for you on Camtasia and send you a link about that. So I apologize if you're if you're stuck there.
um, I really am. Uh, I'm going to show you if you take a look at the right on the right on your screen, there is a button there that says pop-ins, I think. And I'm going to put the link out there in case you want to click on it and see what that uh, what that looks like. So does anybody have any questions at this point that you'd like to ask in the chat? I'm not seeing any. Okay, no problem. Uh, you can email me, you know, if you have my, if Fran at therealtygram.com. Uh, I'd be happy to take any, um, any questions. Uh, you can click on that pop-in. Again, it is Memorial Day weekend. I realize that. I don't want to keep you too long. I will be on tomorrow, probably on for quite a while tomorrow. I'm going to be doing uh, a demonstration. And uh, if anybody wants to join me in the meantime, uh, by the way, if you do join me, you you know you may have your face online, and uh, and and that will be um, viewable to other people. They will see you, they will hear you, and uh, and you should be aware of that. So let me know if you'd like to join me. Other than that, I'm going to do some some neat uh, uh, demos tomorrow, and I'm going to let you go because it is Memorial Day weekend, and I think you should go out and relax and have some time with your family, enjoy something, just kind of veg out, relax. You know, do nothing if you can, and um, you know, but visit this site. I think you'll enjoy this. And if you have any questions, pop me an email. I'm more than happy to to answer. Um, more more than happy to show you what I what I've got there, um, and um, and we'll take it there. So I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'm